All right. Um, welcome. What? Right. No, go, Jeff. Go. We are. What do they say? We are live <laughs> from the sold out Wally residence in Chandler, Arizona. <laughs> Don't give away where I live. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh yeah, I should do the clap thing because well, I'll do. Actually, it should be synced now, but it's always a good thing, yeah, for later video to do this to sync it up. All right, well we'll get started here. So first off, Greg, hopefully you got my text uh, because I I just texted you the official place where it's at. And anyone else who tuned in, great. We're going to uh, jump right in. You guys excited? I am very excited. Extremely. Yeah. <laughs> Seth did not respond. I'm super excited. <laughs> yeah, I could tell in the voice. Hey, actually, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna do a quick review on some of the stuff we covered. Well, what two weeks ago? So we didn't get together last week. We had a plethora of like crap come up, right? Because <laughs> I did too. Jeff did. It was yeah. just I don't know. Maybe Seth's day was perfect, but um. Well, yeah, he's like, I didn't have a problem, guys. What's the what's the problem here? Uh, so first off, for those that either are watching the live stream or this is the first time you've caught the workshop, the goal of these are to basically take people kind of from zero to learning the fundamentals in web development. Um, so far, what do we cover, guys? We have covered uh, HTML. Well, actually, browser, like how browsers. How browsers work, work. yep. Yeah, then HTML. HTML. And HTML. Yep. And little teeny bit of CSS we did last time, but very, very minimal. Since Jeff has looked ahead, we will put him in charge. Come on up, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, for those that are catching this, if you're catching Workshop 3 and haven't watched Workshop 1 and 2, you'll probably want to go back and watch those, especially if you're brand new to this. Now, if you've already done maybe HTML, we're going to jump into more CSS today. So uh, I guess you could just keep on watching. Uh, all right. So uh, first things first, let's just review a couple of tags. We have two main categories of tags, folks. What are they? Block, Block and inline. inline. Correct. In fact, I was just messing with the new uh, Bootstrap 4, it's called, which is a CSS library today. And some of their new uh, CSS classes, which we're going to talk about today, are actually, they have like the word inline in there, which signifies what? Must mean it goes on the same line, inline, yep. All right, so we talked about how you always have your doc type at the top. That In this case, that's HTML5. I mentioned that, I think, first week. That's the one way you can memorize it, because if you see the other ones, you'll be like, uh, no, way too hard. I mean, they're literally like this long. No, no joke at all. Um, we talked about how you always have the HTML kind of as the envelope, if you will. You have the header. Header is visible to the users, true or false. Okay, false in general, you're hesitating, except for the title. False for 99% of it. Um, pretty much anything else. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's an exception to that rule, but off the top of my head, not really. So, yeah, the title, well, nowadays that we have uh, tabs, will show up in the tab. All right, good. Uh, then we talked about how, you know, we have some of the block level tags like H1, div, article, section. Uh, all those things. What was the difference between an article and a div, and a section, for that matter? Uh, the, well, the, it's just kind of a way to differentiate them. But I think the div. Think so let me let me hold on. Let me ask a more general question. Are they all block level elements? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what's the difference then, really? Not nothing. a whole lot of difference. You don't. You don't want yeah. We don't want div soup. There you go. You don't want everything. Yeah. <laughs> Does, doesn't that, that sounds like something for uh, like if they had a web developer series on Seinfeld, yeah. which would have been too early, I think. I don't know when when was the last episode of Seinfeld? Uh, like two thousand? No, like they would have then. Yeah, they would have in the nineties. No 90s. div soup for you? Yeah, no div soup for you. <laughs> hey. hey, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, don't shh. No, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> Um, all right, so yeah, it, it's uh, a, basically a way to add additional, what they call semantic tags into the document. Semantic uh, is, I don't know who comes up with these freaking words, but it adds meaning. 
it adds meaning. Whereas if you see div, it's like div, 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 well, div. It's like if you say two things and they kind of all look like the same, you say oh, semantics. Like, yeah, exactly. Kind of what I feel, you know? Exactly. Semantics. You know? So is there, is there a particular, like, is there a best practices rule as far as organizational, like, divs go inside sections, go inside articles? Go you inside just articles? nailed it. Yeah. It doesn't, technically, you can do whatever you want, but normally the flow will be your article will be like the big section. I should see now you can't say section will be the bigger <laughs> area. Um, yeah. Section is like a section of that bigger right. block. And then div is like a smaller division of the section. But I literally could put sections outside of the article. It's going to work fine. They're, they're just block level tags. But if you're doing it a little more technically correct, yeah. What you said, article section div, but you, you'll see all the time where you'll have, um, like even a div potentially wrapping an article right. because you might apply some CSS uh -huh. styles, stuff like that. Okay. So, um, we talked about the different tags and all that fun stuff. We then ended right here with the inline style and what anyone remember what I said is good or bad. There's, there's actually pros and cons, but probably more cons to this. Anyone remember? It's not reusable, exactly, because now that article, which you can see this border around it here, um, that style is hard-coded. And notice we did the pretty much exactly the same thing down on the table tag. And, yeah, it did the same thing, but now we're duplicating code. And one of the big things that you'll quickly learn as a web developer is duplication of code is bad. Um, there's a concept called keep it dry, don't repeat yourself. Keep it dry. Um, the reason is that we've done nothing, <laughs> but multiply this times like some of the store stuff, you know, you're looking at, uh, look at, you know, the website for where you're working, Seth. And if you right click view source, you're going to see all kinds of, you know, stuff. I'm guessing yours, do you use internal web systems at work or is it all like yeah, mainframe? Is it a web page you go yeah. to at work? So like all that stuff, somebody's got to maintain it. And, um, I don't remember if I mentioned this on day one, but I think I did. Did I, did I tell the story how I used to kind of joke that when people ask, what are, what do you do for a living? They say, Oh, I'm a doctor. And they go, Oh, really? What type of doctor? Oh, I'm a doctor of code because you end up fixing things a lot. <laughs> um, and so the uh, big thing is you want your maintenance to be like quick and easy especially on this stuff, because we haven't got to the programming yet, right? Okay, so um, we talked about, let me uh, inspect here, that when you use this guy, the little arrow that we talked about, I think on the first day, let me see if I can get this to, there we go. Um, well, that's actually not quite what I wanted. See, there we go, slide this down. So like this article here, notice the element dot style right there. That is, you know, the Chrome dev tools, no surprise to you guys. You've seen that. Um, but, and I think I showed this too, but just as a review, it's kind of cool. In fact, I was just doing this today on some things. I had some weird padding and I'm like, where the freak is this padding coming from? Right. So I go into here and click on the tag and, you know, I, I may not see anything. Then I'll go to its parent. But I don't know if you guys remember this, this is kind of where we ended yes, uh, two weeks ago. You can see the, you know, the border, the padding, and you can actually double click on it and change it. But you can actually play with it because what ends up happening is a lot of times you have no idea what you want until you see it. And so if you go into the editor, you know, let's let's kind of do that real quick. It would be like we go into here and you go, oh, no, 20 is too much. And then you go to 10, right? Oh, no, 10 is not enough. And then you go to 15 and, you know, the whole time you're having to save, mm -hmm. it's painful. So instead, you'll pretty much just right click inspect, um, use the little arrow dude to go, you know, find your in this case, article, and then there's the 15, and then you can actually use the mouse wheel thingy to uh, kind of play with it. Roll it out and see where you like it. Exactly. Pretty cool. 
it's super, super useful uh, to do it that way because a lot of times uh, you might not have written some of the code. Like you're using a style sheet someone else wrote. You don't really know it. Uh, it'd be like if you wanted to modify the store at all, even though I know you probably won't, this store you won't, but if you did, it would be a way to easily kind of adjust things, uh -huh. make a note of them. There is a way you can set up a thing called workspaces in here, and there's actually a way that you can uh, go in and make it where it actually saves to the file even when you change it. But I personally don't use that. Oh, so like when you're working in, in here the, in the Chrome editor? Yeah. You can actually set up a workspace, and I don't ever use that, to be honest, but you you could. So, okay. Um, so let's do this. Let's, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out how to get rid of this dang thing. I don't remember that being in the way last time. Do you guys? Uh, Actually, it might be better down there, huh? Yeah, it doesn't matter. No biggie. All right, so let's do this, though. Um, first off, I want to, before we move into now the new stuff, I want to pop up a link. I think I sent this to you guys. Mm -hmm. This, for those that don't have it, is going to have the exercises we've done up to this point, And then today we'll come up with a new exercise. And since these are completely on the fly, I have yet to come up with that exercise. But we will. <laughs> He's good like that. He can do it right Just on, on the fly. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll add to the document. So for those that maybe haven't seen this, here's kind of what you'll see. And then there's just some basic explorations of tags and then this next workshop three will be css so cool let me go back and see uh all right where are you streaming from oh i'm streaming hey ray i am streaming from arizona so hopefully you can see that um and greg i'm hoping you made it in let me see if i got a text back here no, I don't see one, but hopefully you're in, Greg. Greg, you're a slacker, Greg. Yeah, if you're not in, you're a slacker. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're going to do is, and uh, Jeff, I know you uh, have already jumped ahead a little bit. So did you guys look at the last homework assignment? Did you do it? Yeah. Well done. So what do you got for me? Uh, actually, we'll have Seth start off this time. What do you got for me, Seth, before we move on here? All right, so some of the CSS styling that I have was Font. Okay, uh, font. Okay. It's kind of a lot of subcategories, one was font stamp. Um, two types, generic font stamp. Font stamp. Okay. Um, font family is super useful. We'll, we can talk about that more. We have style, which is normal, italic, and oblique. Okay. Uh, letter spacing. I'm using specified spaces. Yep. Uh, letter spacing in case people can't hear them but text yep color text alignment text decoration would be like underlining line through nice yeah uh, text transformation which would help you do from go from like uppercase lowercase and capitalization yep letters uh, and text indentation that was all part of the font the yeah font. category cool yeah let's so jeff before we go on to yours let's kind of play with this a little bit so if I go in, um, you'll notice first off, this font is, well, not maybe the coolest font you've ever seen, you know, on the web. So how would I kind of know what's going on there? Well, again, we always inspect. Click on the little arrow dude to uh, select it here. And all right, there we go. There's Hello World. Now, if you look, you can see that there's this D, it says user agent style sheet down there. That is basically, um, in fact, let me, I'm going to switch views so I'm not in the, the way here. So anyway, the uh, user agent style sheet that you see uh, right here, this is, I'm going to drag that back up. This is kind of what's built in. So notice font weight was bold on an H1. So first off, see that H1 brackets? Mm -hmm. It kind of looks like code. It's actually not. That's CSS. So that's your styles, like Seth, uh, you know, mentioned like font stuff. So notice display block. Well, what's display block? We know that wraps it down on the next tag, right? Um, font size, 2EM. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can do font size. You can do pixels and you can do points and you can do VHs and there's all kinds of weird things you can do. We won't go into that right now. 
Um, font weight is bold, you'll notice. So if I um, go any further here, notice there is nothing else for the H1. Now if we go to the body, you can also see that, okay, nothing on fonts, right? But, yeah, there's a little bit of margin. Eight pixels is the default, apparently, for the body. Uh, but let's go back to here and see this element.style. Well, right now, if we go back to our uh, code, well, I can't really, there we go, you can kind of see it. There's no style on here, right? Right there? It's just an H1. Mm -hmm. Okay, but going with what Seth was just saying, we could say font dash family. And notice as I type here, font, look at all this stuff you can do. Font family, font feature say, font kerning, font size, font stuff I've never used before. Font, you know, I mean, there's lots of stuff. The big one is either font or uh, font family. So I could say font family, and then it gives me a, a few options here. Like fantasy, I can't say I've used that one before. Uh, cursive, never used that one, but it worked. <laughs> yeah, don't try that at home, kids, unless it's a... Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but this is where, um, so the way that fonts work, you're going to get some built-in fonts kind of out of the box. So, like, for instance, you guys have all probably heard of, like, Arial or something like that. See how it's more squared off now? Whereas you've probably also heard of, like, Times New Roman. Have you ever heard of that one? Yeah. That's kind of what it was, you can see. Sans and, and sans serif. Yeah, the sans serif. I, yeah, I. Like, the, they have like the little. Little. It wide, gets smaller. Uh, it's not consistent. It's not yeah, consistent. Yeah, one's like, yeah, one's like, a, has like flat features and like, you know, the L's are flat or like whatever. And the other one has like the little. Yep. I don't even know what you call them, but like, you know, little lines almost at the top and the points of, of things. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So anyway, um, you know, Arial is a, a, well, a lot of people use Arial probably too much in my opinion, but you can also embed downloadable fonts. So it's possible I might find a cool font. Some are free. Um, you can go to a site. I'll give you an example real quick. One that's pretty cool is called Font Squirrel. You been here? Yeah, I cool. Know. I download tons, of, download tons of fonts. I'm sure in your business. <laughs> well, you're in like what Illustrator and all that all the time. So, so like this Nexa Rust, um, which is kind of a, I mean, that could like totally be appropriate for the theme, depending on what uh -huh. your theme is. Um, that we're not going to have out of the box, but notice there's a download there. <laughs> and some of these uh, Google hosts a lot of fonts up in the Google Cloud. You can get to the fonts. I use one called, um, what's it called? Robotica or something like that. Roboto. Roboto. It's called. I use that one a fair amount. Um, but anyway, we won't go into that right now, but it's possible to get like really fancy fonts, uh, into your font family, like the thing Seth brought up. So if we go back to here, you know, I'm on Arial, which is not very fancy, but we could change it. So what would I do um, if I, you know, refresh this? It's gone. So let's close this up. And what would it look like here? Or, well, actually up here on the H1, what would I do? I'll give you a hint. Look below. How do I add the font family, in other words? Yeah. It's always style equals if it's an inline style. So we could say font family. You know, like Arial as an example. Um, and you can even have, uh, you can have backups. Basically, oops, if you can spell right, you can. So you could have like, hey, use Arial if it's available, but if that's not available, do this. And if that's not available, do this. You just put commas. And that way you can have like fallbacks on uh, the fonts. So when you say embed, like you, you can embed a font in there. So if you embed it, will it be in there like, does the browsers always recognize it? As long as it successfully downloads <coughs> and it's a browser that recognizes these embedded fonts, okay. then yeah, which any new browser does. Okay. Um, now, you your little list that you showed us before. The, the can I use? Yeah. Yeah, dot com. Yeah. 
Uh, now, IE6, eh, probably not. I, I don't even know, to be honest. I don't think so because it's so old. But nobody, hopefully, is using that. Uh, but, yeah, you get the idea. You get the idea. So, cool. Um, all right. So, what else did you mention? You mentioned Font Family. So, that's a good one. Transformation. Okay. We won't do that one right now. That uh, one's. Also, I did font size, size. Okay, let's do font size. Perfect. Now, uh, uh, if you're doing an H1 tag, you probably want, you know, a heading, right? But, now notice I put a semicolon. So, the way styles work, let me back up a little bit here. It's always the name of the property, font family, a colon. Okay, that's the separator. And then the value. And then next one, if it's in line like this, you put semicolon. And then you keep going. Even, even when we do style sheets, you're going to put a semicolon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a semicolon like you guys have probably seen with like JavaScript or something like that. It, I mean, it kind of is. It just means it's the end of that property. That's, it's sort of like in English terms using the period. Hmm. Um, all right. Like in this case, I can leave it off and notice it still works. There's a lot of stuff you can do in the web where it'll still work, but now that I'm going to do, uh, what would you say, Seth? Font size, right? Okay, so let's do font size, and let's do something ridiculous, like 45 point. Well, I mean, that may not be ridiculous, actually. It depends on your website, right? Because you might have a cool graphic behind that <laughs> or something. So um, this is where you can come in. Now, notice how big that was. Now let me do pixels. See how it's different? Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of stuff. Now, notice that's even different. I won't go into those right now. This is a newer measurement. The most common ones are pixels, which at least most of the designers I've worked with lately or that I know of have gone with pixels, but I also see, or, or some of these newer ones. But you'll see a lot of people still use uh, point. People who do like a lot of like web design or, not, or like graphic design and stuff yep. who maybe move over and use point because that's what you're point used to. In like Photoshop and yep. Illustrator, it's all point pretty much. Unless exactly. You change it to pixel, but pretty much everybody's documents come over in like point. Yeah, I would I would actually agree with that. That most people are kind of well, and if you've done like Word, uh, yeah, you're yeah, used yeah. to point. Outlook and Word, they're all like you know point for your yeah. Size. Yeah, so it. Is there a right way? It totally depends on who you talk to, quite honestly. Um, that's just. Is there a way that professional people want it done these days, or like that, that like an IT department would be like, do they prefer it a certain way? Like if you're doing a project. That also depends. On them. On them. You ask them, like. If you're doing a project, uh, I normally the the folks we have worked with over the years don't really even know. You know, a lot of times you're working with um, a pro project or product manager uh, who they don't really do this. Now, if they maybe have someone at the company uh, who has web experience and they're going to have to mean because a lot of times what happens is you'll build something if they have IT staff. Right. And then just deliver it. Right. And then you're kind of like, okay, they later. <laughs> and then they got to maintain it. So in that case, they may have what's called a style guide. And there uh, are many Airbnb. You guys have heard of them. Mm -hmm. They have a really popular uh, style guide for lots of things, actually. And there's others out there. So it, the really organized companies have these style guides, not just for CSS, but even for like coding. Right. On, hey, if you're going to write code for us, here's how you do it. Because otherwise you get, um, I think I've mentioned the term cowboy coding. Yeah. It's like, draw. <laughs> and you never know, you know, you're going to do it different than Seth, and Seth does it different than me and Danny. and. So they can actually train an IT staff and everybody's kind of on the same page as far as how it's going to go and how they're going to be trained. <clears throat> you would think that'd be how it is. That's, that's the goal. <laughs> In the real world. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. It, it really does depend on the management, um, but the good management, yeah, they'll have style guides for all this stuff. Like the biggest mistake you can do with contractors, and keep in mind I am a contractor, is not give them right. guidance. Uh, we had a project for a particular store, or uh, we did training for them, I should say, that you guys know who it is, but I won't say. 
But anyway, they have some contractors and they didn't give them a whole lot of guidance. I found out from someone and you should see what they got back. It was an absolute nightmare. Um, like the manager goes, Hey, will you stick around after this class I was doing with them? And can you take a look at this real quick? I'm like, yeah, I'll take a look. Uh, and he, he didn't like give me any indication if he wrote it, you know? So I'm like kind of beating around the bush, right? Cause I, I don't want to be like this. Absolutely. Who's the idiot that wrote this? And he's like, I did. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're the one paying for me, aren't you? Anyway, uh, so long story short, the companies that don't have some very strict guidance for CSS, even HTML potentially, uh, definitely JavaScript. They end up kind of having a mess to maintain. So yeah, yeah. good question. Any questions there? Makes sense. So everybody see what font size is kind of all about. All right, cool. Now, again, we're still not really doing it the way I want to do it, but we'll get to uh, style sheets by the end of this. So give me others. Uh, the only other one I had position. Position. Yeah. Actually, position super useful. I won't do that one now because that one, uh, well, I can show you. What, what, what do you have for a position though? What um, any values you listed? Uh, yeah, so I had the main four values, or five values, static, relative, fixed, absolute. Yeah, sticky's new. Um, yep. Basically static, uh, it's the default positioning, uh, not affected by top and bottom, left, right. Um, yeah. Movement on there. So just as an example, I could say absolute. Notice this just now went wacko. <laughs> um, now, Sticky, that's a brand new one, actually. At least as far as I remember, it's really new. I don't think that works in all browsers. Sticky's, uh, you ever been on a website where the header as you scroll is sticky and it kind of moves with you? Yeah. You know, that's kind of sticky. And then fixed. You mean like the parallax scrolling kind of? Eh, not parallax so much. That, that's the body moving. Right. Kind of, right. Right. Okay. Uh, no, more like, uh, well, there's so kind of like two the things. Menu, like it kind of scrolls down with you, yeah. That's kind of it's a sticky one. You might have heard of fixed or seen fixed. Yeah. Most a lot of menus on an actual, not on a website, but like on an app uh -huh. on a website. You know, as you scroll, it has maybe a toolbar, and you always want it available. Uh -huh. So oh, you can okay. use like a static thing. Now those I never do by hand though. Um, that's where I use Bootstrap or Foundation or Pure, one of these CSS libraries. We'll probably get to that maybe maybe next week. We'll see. So anyway, let me go back to, let's do like static here. And you don't really see a whole lot going on there, right? Okay, because that one we'd have to do a little bit more. You also have relative, you probably, I think you said. Now that one, it just means it's relative to its parent, which right now the parent I think is the, yeah, it's the body. So that's kind of what it was anyway, <laughs> right? In other words, the position of it is relative to what's above it, the parent. And so if I now moved, if I wrap this in like a div and we were to move that div, like we absolute position the div, but then make this relative to it, then it can kind of move around um, inside of there. These normally I don't tweak, but just today I had to play a little bit with absolute actually. So like absolute, where, where do the values come from from that? Like where, like, cause it's, Obviously, it means it's got an out. It's an absolute. That's where it's always going to be, or whatever. Yep. But where do those values come from? Are those just so it's defaulting there? right now. Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't do this one a whole lot. Yeah, there we go. Pixels. I got to put top and left. Uh, let's say like 50 pixels. See that? Uh, so it's defaulting to zero zero. Oh, okay. Which is the upper. I'd have to double check. I, I think it's defaulting to zero, zero. We, we could actually probably figure that out through the, uh, the Chrome tools, yeah, right? And this is like the stuff that I am more than happy to admit. There's stuff that you just plain go look up. Cause like, I don't think anybody off the top of their head, unless they used it today, right. goes, what's the default top and left of a absolute position? <laughs> and you know, and if you do that a lot, you probably go, Oh, well, duh, right. zero, zero, it's probably zero, zero, but, that's one of those things where you go to that dev.mozilla.org and you look it up. Right. It takes 10 seconds. Exactly.
Absolute said position relative to the nearest position ancestor. Yep. Which in this case, we don't have one. So it's allowing us to move around anywhere we want in the page. So have you ever seen, uh, you'll have like graphics, but then they'll overlay stuff. But if you right click inspect, which now you guys know how to do, you, you might think it's part of the graphic. But then if you look at it, you'll go, oh, that's not part of the graphic. They actually overlaid text. Yeah. Well, that's where absolute po potentially could be used or relative, maybe. Yeah. Now, see how this is a mess now? It's long. Watch what happens here. So you might go, oh, yeah, we'll just wrap it. No, you don't want to. You don't really want to wrap those things. Um, it didn't really affect this one, it looks like, because I think this editor is helping me out. But see how the color changed on it? It's kind of bluish now. Uh -huh. Whereas when it's not, I think it was, yeah, it's kind of greenish. So bottom line, you don't wrap attributes. So can you imagine how out of control this gets? <laughs> it, it's kind of a mess. Especially if you have a lot of styles. Exactly. Styles like exactly. So like we can move, there we go. Now we're out of the way or better yet in this one, we're just going to go in the normal block level flow. And now we're back to just flow of the document. Okay, cool. What'd you find, okay. young man? Well, borders. Okay. Uh, they create a border around uh, some HTML. Yep. Whatever, whatever the tag is that, that you're styling, they'll create a border around and it could go anywhere from transparent to black, thin to thick, you know. Exactly. Based on just what you're trying to do. This one's super common. Um, so is font, by the way. Font's like really common. Let's go search real quick for border because this is another one that although I use borders a lot, most of the time I do what you see here. See how it's solid? Uh -huh. I think I showed you guys the last time, though. You can do, like, dotted line and stuff like that. See, there's a ton of values. This editor is not going to give them to me, but if I'm in a real editor, like VS Code or, um, you know, Visual Studio or uh, Sublime, or there's all these editors out there that are for web development, they'll actually, as you type, sort of pop up the options. All right. Because... Not many of us memorize all those. <laughs> yeah, right. So what what do you work in generally? VS Code. VS Code. That one I showed first time. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I have it. It's right there. Visual Studio Code. It's it's newer, but it's freaking awesome. It's it's like really good. Um, I mean, there's a lot of other good ones out there. Um, you know, Sublime. It's still popular in some circles. Um. There's an all HTML JavaScript editor called Brackets. That one's from Adobe. Uh -huh. I haven't seen that one as much lately. People using it, but it's free. Um, GitHub has one. So um, that, that VS Code, you, you can do it like it work well with lots of like while well, putting together like pages where you have like JavaScript and HTML. And totally. And... Totally. As we get a little further, we'll start jumping into that. But uh, yeah, that's actually what it's for, pretty much. So cool. Uh, let me see. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, if anybody is watching the live stream and has any questions, um, by all means, in fact, Greg, if you were there, <laughs> uh, then type a question if you want. We'll, I'll try to check those. But anyway, let's go back to border here. All right, so border CSS. And all right, so here's a couple options. Uh, solid, dashed, solid. Double, uh, ridge, but if we scroll down, they should have some options in here. Um, yeah, so see this, uh, so first you give it the width. That's like the one pixel you saw right there. Then you put a space and you give it the style. And this is where it's like, well, so what are the styles? Well, let's go look at all the styles here. There's a bunch. All right, there you go. So none, dotted, inset, dashed, dash double, dash groove. Um, in fact, oh, I see what word they, I didn't notice off to the right there. Yeah, see as I click it. There you go. That's straight from like the 90s. <laughs> What's that one? Inset. Um, you know, dash solid. That's, that's making a comeback though on pictures. 
Yeah, it is actually. I, I, I the like the latest that um, that Divi thing I work with, like they put out like uh like little just like templates and stuff like that they'll send you every week. Uh, different things that people do and like you see um, more of all that? of them like all the new like really cool trendy looking e-commerce stores like all the pictures have that like border border but nothing there. around the other two sides where it's like that inset border where yeah it almost highlights the that and that huh. and it makes it kind of like, so it's like totally making a comeback now but the but the sites look great like really you can great. make it look good this yeah. one i'd offer maybe not Exactly. Uh, it made the pictures like of the products look really classy. But, yeah. That, but this like, one they could work on. Yeah, it, it's a little different though, but, but the same concept almost to make it look like three D, like around the, the border. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. Anyway, uh, so that's the the so the first one was basically how big, right? Second one is the style. The most common by far is just solid, uh, by far. But, you know, every now and then you might, I don't know, dot something or dash or dot. if you wanted. You see, I mean, you see that. You ever seen you go to a web page, they're selling something. They really want to call that out. They might actually put a dotted, you know. I don't use dotted much. They do the, they do the gifts with the dotted. Gifts. There you go, man. Do not say it wrong. <laughs> That's going to be hard. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's like it's a freaking gif, man, not a gif. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's go back. So let's go to the third one and color. You can see now color nowadays, color can be a bunch of things. It could be uh hex. It could be named like you saw me. I think I put black here, right? But black would be actually hash zero, 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 zero. Or you can save some postage and just do three of them if all six are the same. How do you know that? You know, that's a hexadecimal code and there's color pickers. Um, you probably play with that, Jeff, the hex codes. Uh -huh. Um, so like in, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, all those, um, they'll have, you know, color pickers and they'll give you what hex, yeah. CYMK, RGBA and other stuff. I don't even know what it is. I know. So. There's a couple of them. I'm like, you're like, what? <laughs> I don't need to find out more ways to pick a color. I yeah. Plenty. Exactly. So anyway, um, that's kind of what the border is. All right, what else you got? Let's see, um, background color. Okay, that's a good one. That one's used a lot. So uh, that—that's uh, a style that that uh, is used to change the color of whatever the background is, whether it's like the, the you know in the body, the whole page, or yep. maybe it's behind uh, you know in, in a certain section that you're. That you're trying to style, that you can use the background color to to change that in just that specific section. Uh, she that's getting I shouldn't say overridden or something. Didn't like that one. I, I want to. I always want to say section. The section's an actual uh, element. That one's getting overridden somehow. But anyway, yeah, it, it's basically for that uh, container, that block. That, yeah, that block. You can, uh, yeah, you can change the background color, like the yellow right here. Phenomenal yellow. Beautiful. It's beautiful. You see that all over the web, right? Not so much. <laughs> but this is where, you know, now, um, like RGBA in parentheses, uh -huh. you can put, you know, I have no idea what yellow is for that, by the way. I don't have that memorized, but. Um, if I do zero comma zero comma zero comma zero, that's you know black. Actually, why didn't that do it? I uh, must be not doing the syntax right or something. This is where you go. See, this is why I don't use uh, RGB. Interesting. Well, I expected that one to work. Oh, you know what? Maybe it doesn't work in this though. It should. In that, oh, you're saying in this editor? Well, it should though. I'm, I might just be screwing it up. Um, so let's go down to this is let's yeah, do real life. You did it last week with the color picker where you did the yeah, well, I thought I did too, but hey, maybe I'm remembering it wrong. So let's go down to color. Here's some of the like name colors. There's hex. Before you guys leave tonight, you need to memorize all that, please. Ready, Seth? Go, <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> Got it. 
Uh, let me see. So there's the hex. There's the R. Yeah, right here. RGB and RGBA. I did that correct. So I'm not sure what it didn't like. Mm, let me see. And we'll copy and paste an example. All right. Let me copy and paste that in. Yeah, this is why online. This is cool because I can save what we're doing for you guys. But I don't. Yeah. These are these are great for learning. Right. I don't develop in these though. Right. Because number one, I want a color picker. Um, I don't want to have to type all this crap. <laughs> well, actually, that one worked. So let me do. I did zero. Oh no, 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 I know why. What did I do? No, did this was. Did you not have the? No, it, it it worked correctly. No, I did RGBA, but what did I put oh, as the yeah. fourth? Zero. Yeah. What zero mean? That's the alpha. It's called. Well, so that means show nothing. So makes it all white. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually transparent. So let's go one. There we go. I was just being an idiot. Um, welcome to development, by uh, the way. The, see, I, I don't, I've never used RGBA before. It's a newer one. Like some of the older browsers won't support this, uh -huh. um, but all the new ones do. I see it. All, I see it in Photoshop, and it's one of the options as your color picking. Yeah, it's just the alpha channel. It's I, called. I, I just always I use CMYK and Illustrator and RGB and Photoshop. And you know what, designer is I don't in this world. You don't. There is a CYMK, by the way, type of thing you can uh -huh. do now, but. Most people use RGBA or uh, hex I use, or name CM, color. I use CMYK and Illustrator for for like the printing and stuff. Like uh -huh. when, when you print, yeah, you know, all like our wide format printer, it's all CMYK. Well, and I think yeah. See, that's Supplement now we're out, totally outside of my expertise because yeah, exactly. I don't do so, that. Yeah, but so that's why when I'm in Illustrator, I I have it set on CMYK because that's mostly what I'm doing in there. But then in Photoshop, I'm all RGB. So like. Yep. When I bring my Illustrator documents and I gotta switch the mode all the time because yep. it's in CMYK and I want it in RGB and because in Photoshop, Photoshop you're probably rasterizing it. Exactly. And yeah, anyway, we won't go into that. But anyway, that's why it didn't. I was just being an idiot. I I didn't realize I put a. I was just typing some numbers and not thinking. Oh yeah, zero means off. <laughs> so like, if you do, how would I do? Like, sort of show it, but sort of don't show it. I'll give you a hint. One is all the way on. Zero is all the way off. 0.25. Yeah, like 0.25. And then that's that's what you get. Or 0.75 should be almost black. There we go. Now now it's not really doing much, but if we had something behind this, it would actually show through to it because there's a okay, little bit of transparency. Yeah. Okay. That's where you ever seen where they'll highlight text above like an image oh, and they'll have like a really light, like a maybe a white box oh, to okay. highlight the text. And the reason they do that is because, you know, if you put the raw text on the image, you won't be able to see it very well. Right. So then they'll use the alpha transparency to allow it to see through right. a little bit, which we could play with, but we won't. <laughs> but we could. Yeah, otherwise, if you don't care about any of that, you could just do like that. Now, let's go back to what Seth, he did fonts. The problem is now you can't see the text. So if background color changes the, well, Background color, what might change the font's color? Font color? Okay, that's what you would guess. You're, I My purposely, color. yeah, it's color. I purposely led you down that road. <laughs> I, I knew it was color. Yeah, it's I color. It <laughs> and then we could do like white or hex or RGBA with what? 256, 256, 256? Uh, is that right? I think 256 is all the way on. Oh. Uh, zero is all the way off for colors, RGBA. 256 is all the way on. Oh, wow. Yeah, if I remember right. So now, um, well, hold on here. We got background color and, oh, well, what's happening here is, look what I did. What's zero, zero, zero? Black. Black. Not going to work. Okay, now this is one you just kind of learn. Uh, for those that are new to this watching, don't feel like you got to memorize. Oh my gosh, how would you know to use, you know, hash FFF? Here's my answer to that. Those that use emoticons, you totally have those memorized on the keys and stuff. It's easy, right? It's the same thing. <laughs> Remember, it's black, white, gray. <laughs> yeah. I, I literally, I, here's what I can tell you. This one I've used since I started web development. 02027A used to be one. I don't use it now, but uh, you won't be able to see it. It's a blue. Navy. Uh, kind of navyish. Yep. 
Um, and I know some of the light ones, like EF, EF, EF is a light gray. I did CE, CE, CE the yep. other day. Yep, that's a, I use that, that one sometimes. Like medium gray. Yeah, yeah. So if we take out the uh, back, or let's just make the background white. And now notice it's kind of, it's hard to read because it's a gray. And then this, I think, is even lighter. Yeah, you can't even read it now. It's there. But that's how every time you guys go to a web page, that's all they're doing to change the colors and the fonts. And I mean, it's super common in web development. So I'm thinking we won't mess with that as much. Well, let's just do this. We'll do black. And again, you could just do like for the normal colors, you could just say the color. It's called a name color. So. Okay, so here's a question for you. The, you said usually you're not going to do inline styling because it's not reusable. Yep. So what are what if any are the advantages of inline styling? The main advantage is number one, you can see it really fast. You don't have to have a separate file to download. Okay, but I could at the top of this remember the head. What's it for? Metadata. Yeah. I could put what's called a style tag. We're going to start to get to that next. Actually, mm -hmm. I'll show you that. The other one is, I don't know if you guys, I think we talked about it week one. Um, when you have a scenario where like page load speed is of the utmost importance, oh, okay. there's that above the fold, I think they call right. it. You, some people get so technical because, you know, if you're like Amazon.com mm -hmm. homepage or, you know, a credit card company yeah. or, uh, you know, enterprise, because I'm sure they just get pounded, you know, with lots of traffic. You do care, obviously, how fast it loads. Yeah. There's no extra download with this. Okay. But you've already brought up the con, which is, yeah, you can't share it now. So Not you yet. You really should only use it if, if it's something that one has to go faster too if you're only putting it to one specific spot and you don't need to reuse yeah. it maybe there are absolutely it's it's rare for me because i prefer css classes which we'll get to here mm -hmm. um it is rare for me to do this but there are times where i've had to for i won't go into the reasons but there is a very good reason okay. uh, for it it's rare but it does come up so that's one thing with web development. If you know, you'll read all these posts. One thing you'll find is developers all agree on everything. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff gave the look like, really? That's not what I've heard from you over the past 20 years. Nope. You're right. I just, I totally lied. <laughs> uh, everybody has a freaking opinion and everybody thinks they're right. So, my general rule is learn what's considered best practice. Go to the Mozilla site. Go with what they say for now, or hopefully what I say, and then tweak it to your needs. Um, because one thing when people are, I mean, you guys are old enough that you can not be too intimidated maybe by someone saying it. But when you're like, you know, straight out of high school or straight out of college and you got somebody that's 10 years older than you telling you that do it this way, you know. It, and then it turns out, though, that they didn't know what the freak they're talking about. Uh, it t happens all the time. Go all the time. Person down 20 years later. Why did you tell me to do yeah, it? Exactly. Exactly. So let me see. Uh, Penny, hey, random question. Okay, this is a good question. Um, would you recommend doing a six-month boot camp for someone that's interested in coding and starting off? My local university offers a cert in coding. Uh, so excellent question, Penny. The, uh, the short answer is depending on who you talk to, boot camps have extremely positive and extremely frowned upon positions. Um, I do know some recruiters, for example, if you've gone through a boot camp, they will absolutely try to place you. That's good. Um, because you can get a job a lot quicker. Uh, but I also know some companies that once they hear you went through a boot camp, they're like, no, which I kind of think is uh, a little bit unfair because there are plenty of people I know of, and I was kind of one of them who got hired straight out of like college and had very little background in any of this. I didn't get to go through a boot camp <laughs> and I survived, you know? So, um, what I would do is go talk to their, uh, I know they'll have some placement people, or they normally do. 
and talk to them about what they're seeing out there. Because I, there's one, uh, here, I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and there's one here called, uh, Dev Mountain. And I've heard really good things, actually. Well, actually, there's a couple here. Uh, uh, Gal, uh, oh, geez. Galvanize. Galvanize, thank you. Galvanize is here, Dev Mountain, and there's even others. Um, now your university one, I don't know what they're charging you. It might actually be a lot cheaper because some of these others are pretty pricey. But, oh, you told me about the U of A one. Yeah. Like eleven thousand dollars for a Yeah. It was very broad though. It it feels I looked into like four or five of them and they felt they all felt like they were they would have been good, but they're pretty expensive for how broad they go. Like the Yeah. I feel I felt like you wouldn't really be ready to work with once you got out telling me after you'd still have to put quite a bit of time. Well, and so that was going to be my last point. We'll move on. But, um, so number one, I would go talk, take some time to talk with the placement people and, and first off, make sure that when you get done with this, you know, how, what percentage of people are getting placed? Because if they are placing, say 90%, the thing is you're going to have six months, but if you put in the time, like in the evenings and weekends, you could have a year and you could be way ahead of anyone that has a a bootcamp thing. So I'm not opposed to them personally because I know plenty of people that have no college degree, uh, straight out of just high school. They taught themselves later. In fact, they went into other careers and then came into web development. That's kind of what we're doing here. Right. And they're doing absolutely fine. It's, it's always up to the person. So anyway, my last comment is what Jeff just said. Uh, make sure that you're doing a lot of hands-on. If your program is more of just kind of if if they can't give you good details on what they're going to cover as far as hands on, I probably wouldn't do it because uh, book knowledge in this case isn't going to help you as much. Now, if you're super industrious and you on the side, because I know these guys, you know, you've been doing your research on the side and so is Danny, uh, then you'll be fine anyway, I think. But I would pick one that I know Dev Mountain, for instance, and Galvanize. They're very hands-on oriented. So the Galvanize ones seem like it was the best out of the five or six. I Did you look into all yeah. those? It was cool. Mo- it was the most expensive, but it seemed like it was the most complete as far it's as like what they hers offered. was eight k, which yeah. that's pretty cheap, Penny. But uh-huh. make sure you're getting something that's I, worth eight k. I think U of A was eleven, and I think the Galvanize is like coming up on twenty. Yeah, yeah, those are at least I think twenty or more. Yeah. So. And some aren't six months. Some are shorter. Yeah. The gal- um, yeah. The galvanized was six months if, if you're willing to, if you could go full time. Yeah. You could go 40 hours yeah. a week, basically. Yeah. And Dev Mountain, you can do that too, kind of full time. Um, uh, so anyway, we'll move on, Penny. But actually, that's a great question to ask. I mean, that's the reason we're doing this. Um, do you need it to get a job? It really depends on how deep you want to dive. Honestly, I think if you just, if you found a job, go look on Monster or one of these other job sites that is just looking for like beginner level HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you probably, if you're already pretty computer savvy and you do your own research, you probably after six months on your own, if you work at it, obviously, um, could still get that job. Now, if they're looking for someone who, you know, you need the ins and outs of HTML and CSS and JavaScript, then I, th- I think the boot camps are going to probably help a lot. So anyway, yeah, good question. Good question. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Cause I think this is now the first, no, Ray was on too. So second person we've talked with live, right guys? You're going to send it out to your nail tip list. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to start my own boot camp, guys. Uh, did you guys sign the, uh, we did. We were we were grandfathered in. No, you weren't. <laughs> Fifty grand, <laughs> payable by Friday. No. All right. So moving on here. Moving on. Um. Uh. Do you have any other properties, Jeff? For we... I, I do. I had one. What else you uh, got? Let's see. I had uh. Uh. Well, I had font size as well. Um. I also had margin. Okay. Margin super uh, useful. Creates the spacing around the outermost element. Yep. So do you guys remember, let me see if I can. So first off, how would I get to the padding around this guy? You guys know this because we just did it. But how do I know the padding of this guy? What's the easiest way? Yep, right-click inspect, exactly. And then what? 
Well, it kind of took me right to it, but Google yeah. Style and yeah, I hit the arrow. You got your little padding, your little graph over there. Or your yeah. Little... This is the easiest way to know. So today, just as real life experience, I told you guys I, I had this problem where I, I had a button at the bottom of this app I'm working on. And I'm like, where? I mean, it was like a gap of this much between the content above it. And I'm like, Who's the idiot? And it's me because I wrote it all, but <laughs> like, what is this gap? So I went into here. I figured, oh, okay. I, I had a massive, I actually had a max height, it's called, uh -huh. on the parent. And the max height was bigger than the actual text. So there was a big gap. Um, and so it wasn't even padding, but that's how I figured it out. So I went into the button in this case and I looked at this and it was like, oh, there's no padding. Uh, well, this one has 15 on top, but. And from there, um, I quickly went, oh, okay, well, it must be up somewhere on the parent. And it was. Or it wasn't even a parent, it was a sibling. It was a tag above it. It was pushing it down. So this is like the best little guy ever. Uh, I just had another problem. In fact, I still have a problem. Tonight, after we're done, I'll be working on this problem. Uh, I have a little menu thing off to the right for these, this kind of lab environment I'm building for something we're going to, uh, push out hopefully in the near future and right now it's too wide so i'm trying to figure out where is that width coming from well i went to here i saw oh width you know like in this case 460 height 36 and i can start to play with it and then see how it fits in or width otherwise like i said you'll go into the editor save your code and then seth you'll refresh the page and go nope that's not it and then you go back to the editor, try one pixel up or down, save it, go back to the thing. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> and it's just annoying. So this is the best tool out there, man. It's freaking awesome. So, okay. Um, let's see. I was going to, what did we talk about? Margin. Margin. So we covered this the other day, but so margin is what's outside of it. Padding, or well, border, you, you've seen border is the border. Padding is, okay, so inside of that box level or block level element, how much gap do I want around like the text, as you see? And then, uh, well, that's it. Then you have your actual text inside. Yeah, so, so padding is actually the interior, like it's spacing on the interior and then the margins, how it spaces yep. the whole thing outside the border. Yeah, so let me show you. Let's add a margin real quick to like the hello world here. So let's just, I'll put it on front. I'll do margin. Well, I'm going to do margin. If I do margin, by the way, and I said like 10 pixels, then what that's going to do, well, let's do something big. You saw it jumped. Let's do like 90. Okay, see what it did? Um, it added, now, you know, the padding is the stuff around it, but outside of that where the where the border would be is the margin. Yeah. So this is where you can move it like, a lot of times you might have, like, you might see it and go, oh, that box is too close to the left edge. So you can add margin. Or I, on the body tag, I could add margin and say that everything under the body is in, you know, 20 pixels or something. Um, now, that is top. Uh, it kind of goes clockwise. Uh, top right, bottom left, all get 90. If we only wanted the left, which I probably would in this case, we could say margin left colon, and then let's do like 25 or something. See how it bumped it over? Okay. Or if we want kind of everything. So um, any others? That's all we got. All right. That's all he's got. So to wrap up, because we're coming up on our hour here, what I want to do to wrap this up is say, okay, great. We did in line today. We talked about fonts. We've talked about padding. We've talked about border. You guys know where to go to look it up, right? You just go to that dev.mozilla. Um, one more time, Seth. Yeah. Go! What is this color? <laughs> what is orange in hex? Go! <laughs> um, anyway, so let's go on back here. And I'm going to come up into the head. And now we're going to add a new tag we haven't talked about. I mentioned it earlier, but we haven't talked about it. It's called style. Now, this is not a separate style sheet. Next week, we'll have to get into that, looks like. 
Okay, and a lot of times you'll see style type equals text slash CSS. Um, officially, that's called a MIME type. It's a multimedia extension thingy that just says how it should be loaded. Okay. Um, in other words, treat this as CSS is basically what that's saying. Now, uh, a lot of times you can leave that out and you'll be okay. Should I put Haiti on live on the live stream? No, I'm not yeah. going to. <laughs> All right, she probably thinks I'm done. Um, so let's come on down to the H1 here. Let's grab this, take off the style. And what I'm going to do is put, um, well, we could do this, actually. What happens if you think if I just put H1, and remember those, those brackets you saw earlier? I'm going to paste this. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, Seth, will you do me a favor? Yeah. You go answer that real quick and see, make sure everything's good. <laughs> all right. So um, the H1 here is basically saying all H1 tags in this page uh, should have a font family of Arial and a font size of 45 points. All right. So now you'll notice if I, you know, let's take off. Arial. There we go. Now we're back to the that type of thing. Um, and so the font size of 45. Now we can come in and do like color. You know, we can do everybody's favorite. Nope. Pink. Yeah, did I tell you, Jeff? I specialize in color th schemes. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pink and yellow. Not, yeah, pink and yellow. Miami 1970s? Yeah, pretty much, pretty <laughs> much. So anyway, uh, that would be an example of a tag that's being styled. And we can kind of do that. Now, what about article? Well, we could do the same thing if we wanted. And anything urgent, Seth, or are we good? Uh, she's without a ride, I guess. She's without a ride? Uh, looking afloat. <laughs> oh jeez. All right. Um uh, we'll wrap up here. So let's see here. I mean and then you wanna see how it's a lot more readable now? Uh -huh. All right. And what was our article? That was uh oh it had all this stuff in it right here. So this is yeah. this is it. So now this is what's called a selector. That's a selector. That, in other words, it selects that the H1 tag should have these properties. This is a selector, an element selector, a tag selector, and it has these properties. Okay, and now you'll notice I can kind of pull, in fact, let's just for the table, we'll do that one too real fast. Do you see how it's cleaning up the HTML though? Now, later we'll learn about how you can put this in a separate file. Does it, do you, does it style the same way in a separate file? Yep. Okay. Yep. Except for now you have to load that separate file. Right. You got to call it. But we'll, we'll get to that next week. Um, or whenever we get together next. So now notice everything's, everything looks the same, but look at my HTML. And now all the styles are kind of in one place. Now, can these get unwieldy? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, everything can get unwieldy. But that's kind of what goes on with the basics. Now, to wrap up, and then we're going to really wrap up here. If I don't want just all H1s to have this style, I want everything, let's just call it big. Now, notice the H1 went back to normal. And notice I put a dot on front of it because there is no such thing as a big tag. Dot big is a class. It's a CSS class. Very good. Okay, so now. Your H1. Exactly. So what do I do, Jeff? Because you've so seen this. Uh, class. Class. Class equals a double, a double quotes big. Yep. That's called a, we'll start talking about that next week, but that's called a CSS class. The re, the way you know the difference between a tag is it doesn't have a dot on it or, or brackets or something like that. It just always has a dot on front of it for a class. Now, can I use this anywhere I want? 
In fact, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Let's leave the H1 alone. Let's make the uh, article a big. And notice how that now changed. Okay, now let's go down to the section. We'll do the same thing. Class equals big. Boom. And any wild guesses, guys? Oh, going yellow. <laughs> Hey, yeah, not an optimal UI design, but <laughs> you yeah, like it? Yeah. It's beautiful. It's clean, simple, yellow. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that is the, now do you see the benefit of a CSS class though? So tag selectors are super cool. If you want like every H1 to have that style, we could do that, you know, but if you want others to do it and reuse those, then you do a CSS class. So I read like, I saw IDs, but then it went to class. So IDs, it seems you like do that too. Do you do you still use the IDs? I don't it use IDs like as much. Like showed it first to like give you the idea. Yep. And then the class kind of like over. I won't say I never use them. I don't use IDs because I use a, a JavaScript framework where I don't need IDs. Okay. But if I was using like raw JavaScript or jQuery or something like that, you use uh, IDs a lot. Okay. Then you might actually style those potentially, or you just use CSS classes. So the the ID is it uses a hashtag is that is that right? Uh yeah, puts a hash. We'll we'll get into that next week. Yeah. So cool. Um. So now we're starting to make a little progress. We have this phenomenal UI, <laughs> award winning UI, I might add. It off to the yes, we are auctioning bidder. off to the highest we bidder. Customize it for your company. <laughs> you do that's that's right. And we can do yellow, blue, or red. <laughs> so cool. Um, well, let's go ahead and wrap up, guys. So thanks for coming. Anyone that stayed with us this long, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll post the video once I have time to edit it and take out all the crap that I didn't want in there. So uh, next week we will plan. I'm traveling next week, but I'm thinking we might just uh, – I'll just do it from my hotel okay. room. And then you guys can jump online that way from wherever you want. Uh, we'll figure out some, or I might just, uh, oh, oh. might just YouTube live stream. And then we could even, uh, we could do Skype or something with you guys for you guys that want to ask yeah. questions directly. So, all right. Uh, let me see if there's any other final questions here. And, uh, thanks Penny. All right. Awesome. Thanks to anyone else that tuned in. We are out of here.